subconsciously because he's trying to say this is our culture yes. is it against the bible yes. i think basically that's a question true. True. this is our culture this is how we do it this is how our fathers did it is it against the bible now remember that just because something is our culture does not mean it fits with the bible even Israel, there's a lot of things that God told them not to do because it doesn't fit with his will for, for them. God, God's word is, is not adapted to anybody's culture. Every culture struggles to obey God because God's way doesn't fit anybody's culture. Now, if you think marriage is a cultural thing, probably you think it's European. So maybe it's the Europeans who do it this way uh, 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 and, and not us. Uh, you, what you have to understand that Europe itself had to change its ways to adapt to the biblical standard. And they adopted the biblical standard as their standard. But before Christianity went to Europe, they were not practicing what they are practicing. They were practicing their own uh, 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 culture. And it was very, very different from Christianity or how they understood Christianity. So, Polygamy is not the biblically preferred way of marriage. And polygamy is not mandated, it is not supported, and it is not encouraged in the Bible. And polygamy is not the standard of marriage in the Bible. Now, people sometimes, act, you know, sometimes I wonder how people read the Bible. Uh, they'll say, well, all, you know, all the great men of God were polygamists. I say, really? Which Bible do you read? So let's start. The first great man was Adam. Was he a polygamist? The man lived with one wife for about 900 years. I don't know. I don't know about you. I mean, <laughs> he tried. <laughs> he tried. We have to clap for him. Married one woman. <laughs> 900 years. So, Adam is not a polygamist. The next big man is Noah. He has one wife. And at the time when everybody is gone and they are sending people into the uh, ark to repopulate the human being. I mean, logically, if God wants to repopulate the human earth, he will say, Noah, take about seven women. Shem, take seven. Japheth, take seven. Ham, take seven. Because we have a quick work to do. We, we, we need to... <laughs> I mean, isn't that commonsensical? From a practical repopulation uh, sense, God, God will say, everybody, just bunch up the women because they have to be pregnant quickly because we need people in the earth. But Noah had one wife. Shem had one wife. Japheth had one wife. Ham had one wife. You see, there are patterns in the Bible. And when you see a pattern being established, don't let the exception become the rule. The rule is being laid. Okay. So, of course, the next big man is Abraham. Is Abraham a polygamist? No. Abraham married one woman, Sarah. He committed fornication or adultery and produced a child with Hagar but did not marry Hagar. He was not in a multiple marriage. He was, his wife was at all practical times in the lifetime of Sarah, Sarah. Did he make a mistake? Yes. Were there consequences? Gaza. So, 
so, so you, you know, I mean, <laughs> because, you know, the Bible, recomm- how does the Bible recommend a lifestyle? It recommends lifestyle by the consequences. So you look at the consequences of an action to determine, is this what God wants? And of course not. Hagar was not what God wanted, not God a sanction, but Abraham did it. Can a man of God make a mistake? Yes, Abraham made a mistake, but he didn't marry Hagar. Abraham was not a polygamist. The worst you can say was that he was an adulterer. But Abraham will say, but with permission. So, <clears throat> but adultery with permission or not permission, is still adultery. All right. Uh, when Sarah died, Abraham remarried Keturah. The two were not there concurrently. One died and another one was married. Abraham is not a polygamist. So we start from Adam to Noah to Noah's children to Abraham. Isaac. Because we are taking up the patriarch. We want to establish what is the norm. Isaac married Rebecca. And for years, about 20 years or so, they had no child. He didn't do what his father did. He didn't look for a Hagar. But he trusted God. And Rebecca conceived and gave birth. Isaac is not a polygamist. Jacob. <laughs> no, we, we have to, you, you have to study the story to see what is happening. Jacob wanted to marry Rachel. He didn't plan to marry Leah. He determined, I've come, this is the woman I like. And he worked hard. And on the wedding night, for whatever cultural reason, the wrong wife was given to him. And for whatever emotional disconnection he had, he couldn't determine it was the wrong woman till the next morning. (laughs) All of that, I can't explain the man's predispositions. But he woke up the next morning and realized it's the wrong woman. And he said, I have been cheated. Should he have accepted Leah as the wife because that is the legally contracted marriage. I believe so. He should have married Leah and not married work hard for Rachel. And I'll show you why I believe so. Um, so, well, he, he decided I'm going for what I wanted. So you get it right from the beginning. He didn't have polygamy in mind. He is acting circumstantially. So he wept and he gets Rachel. And his father-in-law says, if you have gotten the girls, then I'm packing their mates for you. So take them too. (laughs) So Jacob is now in a very bad situation where he can't make the decision he wants. The reason I believe that what God approved of is Leah and not even Rachel. Rachel was what he wanted, but that was not what God blessed. Is for a long time Rachel couldn't have a child. And the, all the consequential tribes of Israel came from Leah. Israel has two consequential tribes. If you want to summarize Israel, is the priesthood and the kinship and the line of the Messiah. The third born of Leah is Levi who formed the priesthood. The fourth born of Leah is Judah who formed the kinship and the messianic line. So in God's mind, the priesthood and the messianic line are the most important things in Israel and they were birthed birthed by whom I will consider the legitimate wife, Leah. Although she was hated, God still approved of that message because the line of the Messiah and the priesthood was built on her. 
Were other children birthed? Yes. Most of the maid's children, not much happened with them, and most of them were very troublesome. Of course, uh, 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 Joseph uh, was born, and, and we, we see God bless him. But Joseph's line was not a blessing to Israel because Joseph's children were Ephraim and Manasseh and they were troublesome. So you really, when you look at Israel, you come back to the one that God approved of. Whom the man who married hated, but because it was contracted legitimately, God blessed it. And the kingship and the priesthood came from uh, Leah. So, on this score, the only one you can say is a polygamist is Jacob. Then we go to Moses. Is he a polygamist? No. Aaron, is he a polygamist? No. Then you come to all the other people. As for the judges, you can't say much about them. The, most of them were crazy people, but God still used them anyway. Uh, but, but then, Israel asked for a king. And God says, by doing that, you have rejected me. Because he said, we want a king like the other nations. And God says, if you have a king, this is what the king will do for you. He will multiply wives. He will tax you. And all of that and all of that. And the people say, we like it like that. So if you study the history of Israel, polygamy occurred in the kingship. That's when polygamy started. Saul, David, and the crazy son of David, Solomon. But it also tells you that if you look at Israel, they had Saul, they had David, they had Solomon, and that was the end of the kingdom. After Solomon is Rehoboam, the kingdom is divided into two. They never become correct until they go to Assyria and Judah. So if you look at it, God disapproved of Solomon and his many wives. And God disapproved of David and his many wives because his kingdom, which should have continued, the line was disrupted because of the thing he did of mass marriages. So from the biblical record, polygamy is present, but it is not preferred. Polygamy is present, but it is not approved in the Old Testament. When you come to the New Testament, there's no argument. Polygamy is not New Testamental. It's not New Testamental. The apostles of Jesus Christ, one man, one wife, one man, one man, one man, one wife. And it's taught clear. When Jesus was asked a question about marriage, he always goes back to the beginning. And that's why when I am studying the Bible, I don't look at verses. I look at patterns in the Bible. I go to the foundational doctrines that have been established in the Bible. Because if you're just pursuing verses, you're going to make a lot of mistakes. So, Brother Chi, a Christian.